and we are back on the Mana Symbol channel playing a little bit of Crashing Footfalls. This is the Teamer Rhinos deck, um, very well known in the format right now. Uh, one of the two primary decks that are using the Cascade mechanic to uh, put free spells or zero cost null spells into play. Um, so in this case, the one that we are trying to get in is Crashing Footfalls. This deck was very successful on the sort of very first weekend of Modern Horizons 2 with the introduction of Shardless Agent. So we have Shardless Agent in four copies, Violent Outburst in four copies. Each of these cards has the Cascade mechanic and is going to rip through our whole deck until it hits the Crashing Footfalls. And then we get to cast this, which gives us two 4-4 four, four Green Rhinos with Trample. So uh, with Shardless Agent on turn three, we can put 10 power and toughness into play on turn three. With Violent Outburst at instant speed, we put uh, eight power and toughness into play temporarily will be um 10 but uh on the turn we cast crashing or violent outburst it won't have um they won't have haste or anything like that so usually the uh, bonus doesn't matter on that turn uh this is a the version of the deck that was uh that that performed very very well for giglio mtg giglio mtg giggy i have no idea which of these things he is most happy with being called um so we do have the sort of uh, teamer footfalls usual suspects of brazen borrower and um, things like force negation but then in the rest of the flex spots um, we see a full four copies of fire ice um, this is both a blue and a red card for for pitching um, blue for force negation and red for fury so fury um, we've played this in a number of decks is just incredibly good against uh, a lot of the sort of low to the ground Luris decks and aggro decks in the format. Um, so hopefully we'll be good here, as well as um, Planar Chaos staple Dead Gone. Uh, for a single red, you have a shock that only hits creatures, but that's okay because the format is infested with Ragavans, etc. Um, also, for three mana, you have an instant that's gone, which is return target creature you don't control to its owner's hand. This can deal with larger threats, Spark Tide, Cauldra Complete, etc. Um, we've got two Prismari Commands and four Bone Crusher Giants. So just like really leaning into the sort of like tempo um, sort of side of things that I really feel like um, the Footfalls deck is much more so. I, I, out of the two decks that we're going to play that are Cascading decks... This deck is the one that feels like you want to sort of interact with little bits and pieces of your opponent's board and keep them pushed back as much as possible over the first couple turns. Um, just diffuse their early momentum, and then you throw down Rhinos, and then you can throw down another or even two sets of Rhinos fairly successfully, fairly easily a lot of the time in this deck um, with, with little effort. So all you have to do is sort of keep the, the road clear for the Rhinos to... Um, pull you over the finish line no problem um i don't know if there's too much interesting technology in the sideboard here we see four endurance four force of vigor uh, and then three mystical dispute one subtlety and three blood moons so like clearly prepared for certain things um i would assume the mystical disputes and the subtleties are a concession to having to beat up on teferi hero of dominaria um force of vigor for certain permanent base disruption we could run into endurance for any kind of graveyard decks be that um living end or or something else of that nature that we could bump into and uh ooh, apologies and blood moon of course um modern all-star so um yeah let's get into this one for those in chat who know me i'm I am not winning at life right now. I mean, I'm kind of winning at life right now, but uh, I am completely exhausted. We, we may only get through the one deck just because I, I, uh, I've i been up since 8.30 because of construction. All of a sudden there was vicious loud drilling today. Which admittedly is only like two hours earlier than I usually get up. But, uh... Um, yeah, it was rough. Let's go, Mir. How you doing, friendo? And then my second COVID-19 shot tomorrow. So I'm really excited about that. So we got turn two ice into turn three rhinos. Not the best, you know, not the best possible hand, but certainly not one that I'm going to send packing. 
Get vaxxed? I'm getting. I'm getting. I wonder if I should have set up for a forest there. I'm definitely going to fetch pretty aggressively. Oh, we're against... We're against... Uh, Black-white sadness. I don't think they're going to be happy when I ice this land. Oh, that's a good draw. Thanks, Jen and I. I right, do what I can. Wow. I, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess. <laughs> Maybe we won't need anything else. <laughs> Could you me through? Would you like another land? Banger. All right. 10 power. That's all I got. Go ahead. A uh, fatal push. Path to exile. Yikes. Almost out of basics there. Why are you drawing so many lands? That's a good damn question. This is, this is not, this is not what I came here to do. Uh, I'm a, I'm a be honest with all y'all chat. I, this is not, I didn't, I didn't set out to play this league and go, you know what, what if, and bear with me on this one, because I know it's a bit of an outside the box idea, but what if we only drew lands and mostly irrelevant spells? Now, Bone Crusher Giant, one of my favorite cards ever printed in the game of Magic, this guy was a good draw so we'll play that and uh could you please not flood out for one stream listen we starve plenty plenty can we play lands like the deck i mean not just being a sassy molassy i have played lands before um if you mean my modern lands deck um i would like to play that later this week we'll see Is this the Vindicate that I that I have been waiting for? Or do they have something even more mediocre? It is a Vindicate. I love it. Vindicate the Rhino token. You got it. I don't know. I'ma just hold all the cards in my hand. Oh, they're on 80 card Stone Blade. That explains so much. Oh, I, I like Legacy Lands. I'm kind of garbage at Legacy in general, and then, like, Lands is a very complicated deck. And then the green-red land deck that I like in Modern, like, I like it a lot. Um, I definitely have some ideas for what I want to try with it next, but uh, I haven't really gotten there yet because I am bad. All right, I guess we're putting them to one. So you've died. Excellent. Bang. Get out of here. All lands. No problems. All right. That game, they played all non-basics. Um, I'm not particularly afraid of their permanent base disruption. I think I can Brazen Borrower or Force Negation most of it. Although I guess Force Negation is probably something I'll be boarding out here. Not too many, though. There's a pitch for it. So I kind of like Dead and Gone if they're on... Mismatched Blood Moons mean auto loss? Yeah, but for who? So, like, what if we go, like, trim, trim, trim? Because I feel like I don't need too many free spells against that deck.
Is there a decent budget replacement for a borrower? You have everything but them. Um... Pro oh, yes, yes. Um, there's a black... Oh, no. Uh... I'm thinking of the black-blue one, which is... Um... Consigned to Oblivion. Oh, Far and Away, yeah. No, no, Far and Away is probably your best bet. Well, that's only creatures, though. I think Consigned to Oblivion might be closer. No, 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 no. It's, a, it's a split card. Yeah, Consigned to Oblivion might be, might be where you want to be. Just because that does what, what Petty Theft does. Um... If you can splash black for that, or if you have a gemstone, you could even play the Oblivion half. Oh, I thought so, too, on uh, on Far and Away, but... Um... But still. I think Consigned to Oblivion might be a good, good get. Yeah, but it's a free card, Mike, right? That's flashback. It's a free 5-mana Mind Rot. So yeah, five mana mine rod is bad, but you already got the boomerang half out of it in theory, or you've discarded it for another purpose. So my hand's perfect. So let's let's go. Late scar, and we'll try to fetch to set up for blood moon. Opponent has mold to five. Yeah. I just think having permanent based, um, like permanent bouncing is pretty good. Um, because it lets you tempo them back on the first couple turns, Jen and I, which is what you want to do to sort of set up a clearer path for the rhinos. But yeah, I mean, you're right, like. It's just, like, interaction that doesn't have a CMC or mana value of three or less is good, but if it also costs less than that and also... Yeah, bouncing Chalice on their end step is a big deal, right? And when you're playing against this deck, it's like, them having that bounce-based kind of removal is really, really tilting. Because it's like, wait, 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 I played my permanent. Aren't I supposed to hose you at least a little? And it's like, nah. <laughs> Sorry, fam. Listen, I'm not going to kill your card. I'm just going to put it back in your hand where it's useless. You can cast it again. It's totally legal in this state. My opponent has failed to find their second land again. Remand with less hope. Yeah, that's a good way to look at it. You hope I get mana tithed? I mean, it'll be on their end step, right? So they're going to waste... Like, they're, this turn's worth of mana, they have wasted yet again. I like my chat. I hope you get mana tithed. Wow, guys. Thanks. It's good to know whose side you're on. What? Yeah, right. Oh, shit. <laughs> I don't know if I can beat a psychopath who is willing to have sideboard kitchen things. Maybe even main deck kitchen things. <laughs> you think it's 2015? Let me, let me correct you. Let me, let me help you. Let me help, help your recollection here. <laughs> yeah i guess so freak listen freak do you want to go live early tonight because I, I don't know if i have two decks in me all right um so let's go ahead and attack uh probably 10 10 30 that i'll be done 
Although this deck might go really fast, so maybe I maybe I'll be able to get through the second one. They didn't even block. I just like there's no one else in the world I'd rather ship the viewers to, which I know you don't really care about, but I I like what you do. I like how you do it, and I I like supporting you with it with the raid and and it's like it's just nice to know what I'm going to do with my viewers at the end of the night. I I try not to always raid you, like if Connor's doing something that's. Would you block some trampley boys? I mean, I figured they wanted to... Like, what is this move? This deck is Karuga D legal. This deck is not Karuga legal. Uh, yeah, because we have crashing footfalls, Roy. The, the whole... The whole shtick is this card. Which is definitely... <laughs> not, not gonna fly. You thought it was a landslot. That's fair. All right, so it's still their turn, so we can go petty theft. Wait, do I even need to theft this? No, because I can force now, and then I can untap and force if they play Kaya's Guile again. <laughs> well, you could play Karuga if you ignored all the other important parts of the deck. Rats. That is slightly too efficient for me to feel happy about forcing. I mean, I'm going to do it, but I'm not happy about it. Path to exile? I... Eh. Eh. Fine. I guess I'll be hard casting Fury next turn. Like a savage. God, opponent. You just, you have to make us both worse people, don't you? <laughs> are you telling me, are you telling me, Mike, that you think Shardless Agent is a flasher? Because if that's what you're saying, I'm going to have to agree. Ultimate power move. Check these out. Just rented black, green, infect, currently 2 0, but getting bodied by four color Uri and Blink. I mean, you should beat them in 2 or 3, but um, the kind of psycho, like Mordekaiser, who runs that deck is usually really good at it. So, the, everything, Roy. Everything. Not everything, but like, the thing, like, that deck is going to have tutors for everything that they have. So. So I feel like Wall of Blossoms Ephemerate is going to be a good wall against you. I feel like, um, I don't know. Probably they have, like, so Reflector Mage and Deputy of Detention Spheres don't work. Okay, so maybe try drawing a Crusader. Just... A suggestion. So let's go ahead and dead this. Hey, sometimes Hierarch gets there. So, this is coming. Am I supposed to attack first and give them the opportunity to double trade? No. But, like... Oh, no, because I attack first, and if they double block, we just, like, Bone Crusher the Kitchen Finks and then cast it. Don't I don't have to play the Fury um, this turn. Yeah, playing, playing against Resto, yeah. 
this 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 game has been very much my opponent playing like some some seriously out of date cards, which is fine. It's neat. Good old pod ban. I actually had to look up that ban announcement due to um the the song that I'm uh, that I'm writing, and I I was enthused. It was some interesting language. Oh, that's loud. They they shocked. They batter spell. Oh, they have solitude. I actually do not have any kind of counter for that right now. Yikes. Oh, they're going to get to buffer their life total a lot, but we should bounce back pretty quickly with the Rhinos coming in next turn. Assuming what they have here is uh, Solitude. So I can't borrow any of my own stuff. This is only spells, so they should get the... Really? I guess they want to deal with the... The trample. <laughs> should have had it for a white harder. Uh, I made a mistake. I should probably just kill this right now. I should have killed it before they blocked. Why did we not command the Solitude Bounce the Angel win? I didn't see that they were at four and that I could actually kill them. I was concerned about all the actual things that were going on in the battlefield and not worried about their life total in any way. I also should have just shocked the Solitude to force the, the trade on the resto, right? Let them have it, Fury of the Resto. The thing is, that gains them... It gains the three life, which is, like, I guess pretty inconsequential. Sure, yeah, exactly. If I if I play the game this way, there will be more turns. Yeah, exactly. And this... So, this is one of the things that I... Um, when it came to... Within the last couple weeks, I encountered... Um, some people who were defining is it Merktide as a uh, control deck. And besides the fact that I believe that is obviously wrong, and I think that they eventually reached that conclusion, but they spent a good amount of time talking about it being a control deck. Is it Merktide is definitely not a control deck. And one of the main, one of the main reasons that is it Merktide is not a control deck is not only is it playing 12 things that are threats, but those 12 threats are primarily threats and basically only Ragavan is able to generate value. Dragon's Rage Chandler and Murktide Regents are definitely threats, and they, they really don't have any other business doing anything else or trying to do something else. Um, like, that that's the thing about control decks, is you're not... You just don't play that anywhere near that many threats. You don't need to protect most of the things that you play as quote-unquote threats, too. Um, let's just do this thing now. Yeah, like, I mean, it's just one of those things, too, where it's like, if you say, like, oh, my deck can kill them by turn five, or, like, hell, Murktide can kill them by turn four, it's like, okay, you're, you're probably just not a control deck then. The definition of decks is flighty to you. Sure, but, I mean... And, and, I mean, there is a bigger question of, like, is it useful? Is it useful to have definitions of decks? I don't know. Um, like, in what way is that actually helpful for anyone, right? Yeah, Regent's definitely... It's, it's a tempo deck. So, 
they they don't have to block but i can make it so they have to block but then like where does that get me is it better to have the borrower and I, I guess putting them on to lethal is probably worth it tempo yes tempo is aggro control that's correct but that's that is correct the other name for tempo that i knew when i was growing up was aggro control we didn't have the name tempo yet when we, when we were coming up like all these like little creature decks that had like spell pierces and mana leaks and and things like dive down and like we didn't have dive down yet but like combat tricks th those were aggro control because the the they were playing a kind of controlling feeling for the opponent but it was by like constantly keeping them off balance and applying uh, aggression and you don't win as fast as the aggro decks but you definitely hose the hard control decks that are trying to play like three and four and five mana spells. That was a bad block. Well, they did scoop, so I, I don't think it was a bad block at all. I think the block was pretty inconsequential, and they just they were just done with it. I think it was a good scoop. Hey, Mord, I was talking you up earlier. You missed it. I was saying that anyone who is a psychopath who is playing four color Urian um, flicker stuff was going to be as good as you and therefore someone to be reckoned with, basically. I don't care what deck I'm on. I don't care what deck you're playing. If it's anything like the decks that you love to play, I'm probably in trouble. Uh, I'll keep this. I think we can draw a third land in our 24 land deck. I just think the plus four plus four is too relevant, Roy. And even though it's the worst plus four plus four, it's still worth having. Like after Might of Old Crosa, um, I don't know. Vines is pretty bad, right? Vines is pretty god awful. Just because it's two mana to get the pump, which is very inefficient. the The fact that it's basically a split card is very nice. No, I, I get it. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's like, I guess the split card nature of it is probably better than the shitty pump nature of it is poor. Fines versus snakeskin veil. I, I think it's probably very meta dependent, Mike. So like, snakeskin is definitely better the more lavadarts are floating around, which they're not so much right now. But if they come back... Um, I saw there was a deck that was playing this Strixhaven card. I think it was a Death Shadow deck that was playing the Strixhaven card, which is like Trample Over, Crash Over. It's definitely not Crash Through, but it's a single green target creature gains Trample Draw card. Uh, I'm skipping Fiddler's Green. I apologize, Alex, but I skipped the live version of Skid Fiddler's Green again. Because uh, you, you put it on the other night. And it's just like, it's long and live. And it's from the tour where he passed away, I'm pretty sure. It's a fine song. All right, monkey. Monkey Reet Rhinos. A love story as old as time. It's monkey meat rhino. Do you side out gemstone caverns on the play? I haven't been Cali, but admittedly I am bad. Um, I have no access to any information from anyone about how to pilot this deck. Other than don't board out your shardless agents and crashing footfalls and violent outbursts during the sideboarding.
Barbecue Hoss, in a couple of years, those will be the oldest new love stories, since very few of them have started since June 2021, between then and uh, December 2019. Although I'm sure a good number have, and they will be very interesting stories to be told. Uh, this is definitely some kind of weeb. Yeah, I've never heard this uh, this this song at all. I don't think so. I don't think this is from the version of Full Metal that I watched. Okay, we'll just pitch land here. Um, I'm kind of interested in holding on to these Force Negations. Am I playing in the showcase? Probably. Um, I am getting my second COVID shot tomorrow, so if I if I'm totally feeling floored on the weekend, I won't force myself to compete. While I'm feeling that way, I'll probably just stream in the afternoon, evening on the Saturday. So we'll just see. And this week has been, like, tough on my sleep schedule and etc. So. You know the rules force everything. I can't force a Croxo unless we want to commit GRVs. Do you want me committing GRVs on stream? Because I have a judge in chat here. He will call me out on my shit. Now, if Moto lets me do it, there's actually no part of the electronics rules policy that prohibits that um i have really good earplugs barbecue hoss the thing is the 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 frequency of this drilling is like really weirdly like mid to low register it's it it's i've tried using earplugs nothing happens it just doesn't matter um, they haven't been doing it much in the last, like, three weeks. Like, the construction's been on the building for oh, probably three, four months now. And um, I haven't heard it in a while. And then all of a sudden today they did something different. And, like, it was just ridiculously loud. So, huh. This This deck might be a little bit easy. All right, we're against Yund. I think I'm just going Blood Moons again. I guess I could cut some caverns on the play. We're on the draw now. Um, the deck lacks recruiters. Freak, you like this deck? It's just, it's just so straightforward. Like, I'm not surprised that Giggy enjoys it. Um, and I don't mean that as a criticism. I think there is probably a very deep, very great level of skill that go. Oh, we don't need forces against Black Red Luris. Okay, that helps. And I probably should have some number of forces. Okay. So we'll just split a little bit. Because, like, I'm not going to be forcing discard spells. You like facing this over Living End? Well, yeah. Um, but to finish my point, like decks like this and black or uh, red green mid range, like there's a lot of skill to playing them at an exceptionally high level. But I don't know. I like. I, I don't love decks that always have such a clear plan. But I'm a bad person, so. I don't mean bad as an evil. I mean bad as in poorly made. Yeah, return to center. For anyone who enjoys the, or has has ever enjoyed the uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, um, and anyone who hasn't, spoiler alert, um, God's last message to his creation was, um, uh, we apologize for the inconvenience, which, God damn it, Douglas Adams.
things things the Hitchhiker's Guide uh, movies never got to. So, hand is perfect. So they saw the Prismari command earlier. I wonder if they sandbagged a um, Void Mirror or Chalice last turn. I guess that wouldn't make any sense. Tarmagoof resolves. Okay. That's so goofy. Hmm. Rub, 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 rhinos, baby! This deck is fun to play Freak, but, like, I don't know. <laughs> oh, wow. Has uh, Tarmogoyf moved down to fifth? Underneath Necrogoyf? I do love me some Necrogoyf. I mean, dude's got madness. Oh, more crosses. Sure, Mang. Can also play a fair game if it needs to. Define fair. Because I think this version... I don't know about that. Oh, yeah. Casting Bone Crushers and Fury. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that actually plays well enough against most of the other fair decks in the format. Uh, probably Black White Stoneblade. <laughs> Black White Stoneblade is like the butt of all my jokes right now. But it 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 knows what it is, I think. I think I think Black White Stone Blade knows what's up with with itself. I'm pretty sure it's a very self confident deck. It's like, listen, listen. I am a champion of the Qs. It's my place. Out of all the decks I've tested, what one do I think is the strongest? I. It's almost definitely Hammer Time. Um, when I played it, I did not do particularly well with it, but I think it's pretty clear from the overall picture of Modern at the moment that Hammer Time is probably the best deck right now. Um, I haven't actually played any of the modern versions of Blue Red Murktide. Anything in the top is anything in the top echelon of the metagame is great. And then, oh, I, I punted. Well, I got more damage through this way. Um, I didn't realize there was no instance in the graveyard yet. This is fine, because they're at seven. Um, any of the tier one decks are pretty exceptional, so... Whichever one of those appeals to you the most is probably what will be the strongest for you. Um, so whether that be team or footfalls like we're playing now, or Living End, Hammer Time, Blue Red Murktide, uh, Grixis Luris even maybe even black red lures i think black red lures is probably a little bit a little bit less overall but gun to my head probably hammer time is the best deck out there right now out of what i've played i mean i have a particular style of decks that i like so 2040 huh gonna fill up my water Cal canisters oh canisters elementals was pretty cracked yeah um i think there is some um, hold on i'll finish this point in a second
there's probably a very good amount of credence to uh, Lord Michael's warning, advice, advisory that said um, the Elementals deck is a lot like the food decks in that it has a very strong engine. But if you don't get it online, um, maybe you just kind of dirtle around and, and do some not particularly powerful things and die. Um, that said, at this very small sh snapshot in the metagame, um, the baseline power level of like a lot of the stuff that deck is doing, where it's like pitch elementals into ephemerate or um, risen reef into you know just like omnath. It, it's it seemed kind of busted um if you play it very aggressively so you have to like mulligan quite aggressively you want to pitch aggressively use your ephemerates aggressively just like get get the ball rolling because that deck will will be able to take over as long as you don't let your opponent get their stuff going yeah i agree with you barbecue hoss and then also, one of the most important things, and I brought this up with last night, is that without four main deck to ferry, you would be a lot more of a dog against the Cascade decks, which is like like a quarter of the top tier, give or take. And like 14% of the field or so. Uh, I do, Freak. Uh, hold on. I, I have the list I played last night. It's really good, by the way, and it was really fun. Just, like, always pitch. Um, yeah, here we go. Canisters Ayay Elementals. Here we go. There you go, Freak. Uh, so we're on the draw, finally. Hand's kind of a banger, though. Let's go. Oh, it's, I mean, it's no problem, Freak. Nobody expects you to keep up with every single VOD from every single streamer. Modern moves so fast, man. It's... The nice thing about it, though, is sometimes it moves and then it moves back. People make developments and then they're like, wait, <laughs> that was not a good plan. Two Swiss beers? Do I agree that Living End... Sorry. So what do you think Living End falls in the top tier of decks? Do you agree that Living End is the deck you want to play against? I mean, I... It depends on what deck I'm on. It depends on how teched out I am for it. I mean, most of the recent versions of Velomachus Turns, which is my favorite deck to be competitive with right now, are, I mean, they've we've always been playing three or four copies of Teferi Time Raveler, which helps a lot, but not on the draw. Um, and then... Um, sorry. Hold on. Okay, we're good. Uh, and then... Um, thanks to Mr. Rayeb coming and, and sort of joining in the development of the deck, we've been playing things like Flusterstorm, we've been playing things like Mystical Dispute, so it's like more on the radar that Living End is something I need to deal with. It's not... Both it and Team or Cascade, from the perspective of someone who likes playing Velomachus, they're just like pretty interchangeably like fine to play against. I don't love them, I don't hate them, they're fine. Um, I have approximately a 50 50 win rate against them um, and it's usually over pretty quickly so i wouldn't say that i want to avoid it at all i don't really mind playing it against it you could run me into it anytime and I, I won't really be pissy about it i don't know if that's a good answer i just like on those decks i'm not afraid of it it's just like i respect it for sure because every game that I play, it's like, it could break one way, it could break the other. So I have a Crashing Footfalls in Suspend, a Crashing Footfalls in Exile, and two in my hand. So there's none left in my deck. Which means... 
So against Burn, I have Brazen Borrower. Do I want to play Bone Crusher? And... No, I probably just want to Brazen Borrower this turn. So let's just go... Do I even want to play this Triome? I guess it probably doesn't matter, but I, I'm almost definitely not going to cycle it by the end of this game. And again, the Crashing Footfalls I just put on Suspend is probably never going to resolve. But... I probably was supposed to play Bone Crusher this turn and put them on dead on board. I don't know. Yikes. So we at five. I mean... It was, like, competitive for being the top deck for, like, three months. I would find it hard to call that forever. But, yeah, I mean, he, it, it, is, it is funny when something that was, like, so decisively, like, near the top of the metagame has faded so far. Um, but, I mean, it, it just doesn't compete very well with the current setup of Modern. You hate all the food variants? Well, luckily for you, it doesn't seem like they're actually all that good, so I wouldn't worry about the food variants. And their namesake, Asmor and Omartica Dice in the Cool the Car. Enchantress just won the last Modern Challenge? Are you real? Wasn't that the one that Canister won on Elementals? Am I misinformed? Okay, so we're against actual factual burn? Jesus. Food is great. Just hard to play the blue variants and the green one is too fair. So what part of that is great then? <laughs> I just... Just not to be that guy, but like... <laughs> I, I, love, I love the food decks. I love the food decks. I really do. I just like... I... <laughs> Blue says draw a card must be good. I mean, Urza's a really good card. Blue is strong if you play it right. Yeah, it's just also very fragile. Like, again, you need your engine pieces to sort of stick. And sometimes a single prismatic ending really messes with your day. So I'm pretty sure I don't want Force of Negation against Burn. But maybe I do. Oh, baby. Fran's Nihilance deck, yeah. Yeah, me, me too, Barbecue Hoss. Is this that version? This has more trip drum shit than I remember in the War of the Spark trailer. Play Force? Fair enough. Yeah, this is a lot more trap drums. But is is this the same is this the same vocalist? It sounds like it's the same vocalist. It just sounds like someone's messed with it. Hey oh, we got a host roo from Oh shit, it's Giggly OMTG. I was just talking about you. Nice list. I got it from some scrub who did pretty well in some tournament. Um He used to play a cool deck. With four main deck blood moons, it was it was a it was a time, um, but that time is gone. When I met him, I was playing iceberg control. I I guess we were both very different people back then. Modern, it does things to you. Have you ever seen my Grull playmat um, design, Giglio? I think you would love it. Oh, shoot. Do I have it on this computer? I think so. Yeah, I do. So let's see. I designed t-shirts for every single... T-shirts or, or whatever you want to do with it. And I designed one for every single guild on Ravnica. Yeah.
Yeah, if you want it as a desktop, I can upload it somewhere and you can grab it. And if you want the files to do your own t-shirt, I have those too. Um, this goes, this goes on the back and then this goes on the front and you can do it in any color you want. Cause these are transparent PNGs. Do, do I like it better than my, is it one? No, I don't like it better than my, is it one, but I, I do think it's well done. This hand F's. All right, let's roll. Um, we are against burn gig and looking at your sideboard, I, I was like, I, I, there is nothing, there is nothing I need to do to Boros burn here, I guess. Dead Gone is such an underestimated card. We cannot be burned. I mean, I beat them in game one. They did stall on lands, so, you know. Got a little lucky there. If people start playing burn, we want Ley Line. Yeah, I, that, that makes sense. Yeah, anyone can song request X slash Master X, so uh, just exclamation point SR space. Put in your song and keep the queue full. I don't know. I've got tap land into gone here. That's not bad. I need to find my third land, but like, whatever. I don't feel dead. Oh, see this, this is, this is, now we're cooking. Although I really, really, really loathe people with their lower teeth singing. Flame Rift! Yo! Opponent came to party. Yikes. Uh, I think I want to try to hit a land drop. I mean, I might as well upkeep it, but I mean, not really. No, I have to wait, because if they play some haste threat, we want to bounce it. Or kill it. Or tap it. Okay. I don't know this. Okay, this 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 cover of zombie and this is damned anthem. That this is this is a bit much. This would be fine if it was in the trailer for the new Avengers movie or oh oh what what is that one with like zombie Hulk? If they ever do a one for zombie Hulk, is is that the one? Is, is it no World War Hulk is what I'm thinking of, but there's. There's a Marvel comic plot line where the entire universe gets taken over by zombies. And they're like zombies of the superheroes. I, I'm sure someone knows what I'm talking about. Um, so now we have EOT, Violent Outburst, or we have Shardless into um, Outburst and then hopefully kill them. World War Hulk is great. Okay, that yeah, that is a real thing. Yeah, music video produced by Michael Bay. That is Darkest Night. It's DC. Are you sure there isn't a Marvel one? I'm sure there is a Marvel thing where the entire thing gets taken over by zombies. <laughs> Roy. <laughs> oh, you're my hero. Did, did we just 2-0 burn? Yes, I would like to put you to three. Any blockers? Any blockers in chat? All right. Any any dead? Bring out your dead. Bring out your dead. <laughs> three o six o baby. <sighs> we can't beat burn. Can't be done. 
<laughs> Bolting through an Eidolon before attacking went well. Yeah. I mean, it was definitely a good sign. All right, we're going to ship this one. Oh, man. Yikes. So opponent also mulled to six. So I'm not going to feel as bad if I mull here. I mean, again, I'm on a 24 land deck. Ah. I think in the dark I'm supposed to ship harder. Because they could be on a deck that's actually good against us. Oh, let's not talk that way, Barbecue Hoss. Alright, I'm gonna keep this. It's it's a tad sketchy. But I think if I pitch the crashing footfalls. No, I should probably keep that just in case. In case I find a, a green source. Elementals. Goblins. Okay. So the recent versions of goblins I've seen are playing Goblin Warchief. So normally I'd be tempted to kill this prospect, but but brought, eh, bleh, bleh, prospector. But I think there's a reasonable shot they play Snoop or no, no Snoop Moggy Mog. Damn son. Bing 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 bing. bing. Is goblins good against hammer or something? I don't know, because I also have been seeing a bunch of it, and I have no idea why. Like, did Jim Davis win something? I, I, the first time, the first weekend I ran into goblins, like, twice, and I hadn't seen it in, like, two months. Um, yeah, I know, Mike, but, like, someone must have made a video. That's what I said when it happened. I was like, nobody won anything with this, so someone must have made a video. That's what happened. One of the big... Goblin content creators must have made a video. People got to dust off their tribal decks. There's a bunch of playable, playable tribal decks. There's humans. There's elementals. Hell, there's probably even slivers might be better than goblins right now. I, I like goblins, though. Goblins has a lot of cool, flexible cards. Sling gang. Sure, sure. So let's... Gone... Or say, dead that. And then when they play Sling Gang, we'll fire um, the Matron in the Sling Gang. Yikes. Unless I had Rhinos, then we would do that. Elves is okay. Yeah, Elves has been uh, off and on. I think they're back to mono green right now, which makes me happy. I should play Elves at some point. It sounds like a, a lot of fun. Yeah, I was going to say, how many caverns do you need? Because, like, there's a bunch of tribal decks that are, like, it's, like, 50 bucks for the whole deck. And then $350 in caverns. But, you know, once you have the caverns, you can play all the tribal decks. They had a ringleader. Yikers. They drew literally no cards. The goblins players I've been playing against recently, this has happened a lot. I was probably supposed to ice the ringleader there. Um, I was definitely supposed to ice the ringleader there, but when we draw land anyway, then I'll, I'll feel super rewarded. I guess maybe I should upkeep fiddle with one of their lands here to keep them off the sling gang. Yeah, probably. Cause it doesn't have haste, right? So.
turn five Aether Vial deal. Auntie's hovels are pricey. Yeah, they've never gotten a reprint, right? Client lags. How do you feel about four fours? We're not fans. Actually, I like the goblins from Warcraft 3 even, even better. We're not fans! Oh god! Rhino's coming! I can't do that too much. <laughs> Good voice, though. <coughs> Do not run. We are your friends. Sound like Toad. <laughs> Thanks, Kaya. <laughs> have you heard the Toad covers of pop songs? I bet you have. You've been around the internet long enough. God. What what was the uh, the the really bad one like um, into the unknown was really bad um, oh chandelier yeah chandelier was god awful all right so let's fire that and that wait no yes well I I, I don't think they have a way to reuse their ETBs but if they do no yeah we definitely want to kill the matron. Like Toad from Frog and Toads are friends. I don't know Toad from Mario. I I I used to play. Well, I, I yeah I, I would play D and uh, I don't have a group right now for obvious reasons. And being someone who usually travels for work makes it very tough. And like travels for work for like six to seven months at a time usually when it's not pandemic. So, uh, I yeah I've, I mean I I usually end up doing a lot of voices when I. When I do D and D, being for someone who made it as a professional musician, my actual in the back of my pocket like dream career is to be a voice actor, which is part of the reason why I've done things like the Simpsons videos. Like, um, if you look on these ones, like you can see me doing a lot of different, a lot of different voices on uh, on those. So they're gonna be. Boarding in Blood Moons. We definitely don't want Force of Negation against Goblins. Um, I guess Force of Vigor would deal with their Blood Moons if they try to moon me aggressively. Which Goblins, they might try to moon you. Um, and then... On the flip side, though, I feel like I could just play Endurance and probably be fine. Because, like, as long as we fetch pretty aggressively <clears throat> before the Blood Moon comes down, I don't think they're going to pillage us or anything. We have Prismari Command to get through potentially afterwards. I think Endurance is probably fine because it also shuts down some of their combos. Target player puts all the cards from their graveyard on the bottom of their library in a random order. So this won't stop a Snoop Moggy Mog combo. So we probably want. The one subtlety over one of them. But just having a 3-4 flash reach is probably fine. Yeah, alright. I'm gonna go like this. If, if I run into a game where they have, like, Vile and Blood Moon by turn 3, I'm gonna be like, damn, should have forced. Uh, forced Vigor, that is. But... What's the Seagate for? It's a land that also pitches to force. I think that's just there for the blue count. Well, I have caverns on one, so that's pretty sick. 
On the other hand, I have no lands. So I think I'm shipping this one. Snap keep. I don't think so. If I knew I was drawing runner, runner lands, sure. But we don't, and I'm not going to gamble on that. This league is going too well. Would be better if you were on the play. I mean, that's an opinion. <laughs> There we go. So if they do have a Blood Moon, they're going to stop me from getting this Endurance in. But that's probably fine. So we want a Basic Forest Mountain Breeding Pool. Ah. So if this is the only time I get to fetch this game until maybe, you know, a good chunk of turns in the future, I'm probably supposed to grab blue. But I'm going to go high risk, high reward. And try to get away with just getting this on suspend. I think there's two islands in the deck too. So like in terms of maximizing our odds to natty draw the land that we need. Yeah. So turn two blood moon would be tough here. If we, if we fade it for one turn, we should be in pretty good shape. Snoop. All right. Snoop, Moggy, Mog, and Dr. Hierarch at the dough. I don't know. Listen. I don't listen to hip-hop. That's a good draw. So... I don't know. Killing both their Hierarchs seems really good until they just, like, have the Boggart Harbinger in hand. So I'm probably just supposed to bone crush the Snoop. Yeah, I, I just can't let them like get the combo kill. I'ma call him Stampy. Oh yeah, bone crushers, Reedy. I'm going to get him for three mana. Yeah. Fire both hierarchs. So if I do that, Roy, I could die on the spot. So that's why I didn't do that. Because you would encourage me not to make that play. Snoop Moggy Mog plus um, Bargart Harbinger will cause me to die. Hey, look, they had the Harbinger in their hand. Would have been dead. Uh, thanks for the follow there. Rice, 81. Rice. Snoop on top. You got it. Thanks, Roy. Now, if only I could go back in time and do that during that challenge a couple of weeks back. <laughs> Get my points back. Um, so let's go ahead and fire, uh, I guess, Hierarch plus Harbinger.
Oh, yeah. Snoop's back. Pyre of Heroes. Now, that's a name I've not heard in a long time. Long time. You know about Pyre of Heroes? <laughs> of course I know him. It's me. Rest in peace, Alec Guinness. Pretty sure he's dead. I don't know, Amir, but people keep saying it and they're making me nervous. People keep saying it. I'm not ready. <laughs> I'm not ready. So, should I be killing their hierarch now so that they can't play and activate the pyre? I don't think it really matters. And then once the pyre's in, we can kill the snoop and the pyre with Prismari Command uh, after I put two, two, two rhinos into play. So this only activates the sorcery speed. It's not really worried about it. Yeah, I, I think what's going to happen, Freak, is I'm going to put two Rhinos into play and then go Shock Shatter. Just get them with the KCOM. They have Chalice on top. Wait until Draw Step. Fair. I don't know about that one. Oh, I can get a free kill here, huh? Nice. Make sure that they don't have the kill. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Uh, they they couldn't kill me with Kiki, right? Kiki would let them get infinite tapped. Oh, but they would have infinite mana. And then they'd be able to fetch up Harbinger off the Snoop. That's actually a very convoluted kill, but I, it, I think it's there. No, because then they wouldn't have a Snoop. So they'd have a card that could kill me on top. They they would have infinite red mana. So if they had one more relevant card in their hand. They do have a Munitions Expert. Okay, so we're going to lose the Rhino here. Yeah. I don't think it's a kill, Kaya. Unless you can figure out... Unless you can explain the last piece of it to me. I don't think it actually works. So they make an infinite number of goblins. Most of which are tapped. Then they pyre one of the two drops into a Harbinger. Oh, oh, because they have infinite other Snoops. Right, 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 right. So eat all of the Snoops have the, yeah, have the, the, the text of the, of the top card, which will be the Sling Gang. Yeah, 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 yeah. It doesn't have to be the original one. Sorry. Yeah. No, it works. Huh. That is, that, that, that. DJ, no, DJF WX with the sick, sick read there. How long are we on this one? Oh, it's coming now? Sick. So I could just let them chalice here. I don't care anymore. Take two stats back. Who, who put on Paula Abdul's opposite of track? Roybert, you, you're my favorite human. It's got poppin' like actual electric bass, but also great synth. Harpsichords, uh, 909 drum machines. I mentioned how modern goes forward and back. It That it does. Ooh. Thanks, buddy. I love this song. Uh, thanks for the follow. Wow, such doge. Draw step the command for free info. Yeah, if I was smart. Um, I guess the downside of that would be if they flip up a munitions expert, which I'm always worried about. Because they'd get to free snipe a rhino. I mean, I'm not always worried about it, but it's like, that has happened to me with like trying to draw step people on goblins with um, Snoop. Uh, 
trophy? All right, you guys got two minutes to uh, bet on my trophy. <laughs> you got two minutes to bet on this trophy. Thanks for the follow there, KTrav92. Two minutes. I think you is a paid actor. I can't pay you enough for that. Alright, I'm going to go win the trophy. Any value betters in chat? Third 3-2 in a row with the Bant Enchant list. Feeling spicy. Nice. You bet Fitty? Yo. Uh, I don't know why that... No, it's stuck again. Boop. There you go. <laughs> you bet the farm? All right, y'all. Let's... Let's disappoint you. <laughs> I... Incoming Yogg. Yeah, that sounds like a pretty bad matchup. Although we have Fury in this build. We haven't really gotten to use it much, but I'm sure it's insane when it does come up. What's up, Mr. Maple Syrup? It's gotta be Living End, right, Mord? Living End must be an atrocious matchup for this deck. The Shuffler. Only the Shuffler is our foe. I mean, we won the die roll, so that's that's a pretty good... Alright. Let's peel a land. Cause you gotta have faith, faith, faith. I gotta have faith, faith, faith. Cause you gotta have faith, faith, faith. Yeah, I gotta have faith, faith, faith. Maybe we can draw land number three. It's good enough for you and me if we're gonna have faith.
Thoughtsies? <gasps> Are we against Black White Stone Blade again? so good it's so good oops all shocks Ooh, manhattan's a good tune don't get overconfident i have nothing to do with what what is happening with this deck Music too loud? Oh, yeah, it definitely is on this one. My bad. Uh, YouTube has no consistency on the sound. Would not call overconfidence a slow killer. What are they playing for Black White X takes forever to do? Brutality. Oh, shit. They're like reanimator? Okay, this, this could be... This could be worse. Where are the Merc Tides and Hammers? This is how you 5-0. I don't know. I mean, if I don't find Rhinos this turn. And by which I mean, you know, I can't. So this is actually looking a little intimidating. Uh, we have Force and Negation we can draw into. We have um, Endurance in the sideboard. Ooh, Alex with the, the theater. Just bounce the Archon? I mean, we can. And it's better It's better than putting Rhinos in before the Archon, right? Um, then we don't have to lose, like, actual factual, like, resources that we care about normally. What's the best matchup for this deck? Probably like humans. So. I think I'm ditching Bone Crusher here. This is just like the least useful in this matchup. Prismari Command doesn't seem particularly good either, but. Yeah, at, uh, for, wait, what? What's the best matchup? For, is that for this deck, Roy? Oh, for Black Green Effect. Yeah. Yeah, Ad Nauseam is probably pretty good for them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if you want to talk to someone who's a pretty in-depth expert on Infect, certainly on Infect technical play, if not, like, where Infect is perfectly positioned in this metagame, uh, Roy is your man. He's... Everything I know about Infect I learned from losing to Roy. Oh, so I should have grabbed the second blue source there. Okay, doesn't matter. It's a little unfortunate because now I don't have the ability to. Well, I didn't have the ability to hardcast force here anyway. So we lose the Prismari command. I mean, we're still very much in this. They're not finding much to do. But neither are we. Yeah, I was definitely supposed to get Breeding Pool for the Stopping Grounds. Did I get it first, though? I don't know. I'm definitely supposed to draw a third land by now. Classic no win con black white. I mean, kind of. They have win cons, they're just not able to use them. Whoa! I mean, fair enough. Baller play. Baller play from the opponent. I respect that. 
I mean, the next reanimation spell they're playing, I'm definitely going to force it. Yeah, they do. It's called Persist. Yeah, they don't need more than two lands. It's just like, when they did that, like, they may not actually have had the next land in their hand, right? Like, we don't know that. Yeah, they, they don't need that many resources. I just, I do assume that they have some higher cost cards in their deck. I, I've seen it, uh, Kaya. I haven't played it, and I haven't looked at it in depth. So if you want any, like, information on it, I can't give you that. I can give you the deck list. I have the deck list downloaded right now, but I haven't really looked at it. Wub. This was a deck that he was talking about during, like, MH2 spoiler season, like, before the set. Or, like, once the full spoiler was out. Like, I remember him talking about this deck, and then, like, I never saw him play it until, like, last week. Kind of funny. It felt powerful, but you went 2-3 with it? Yeah, but I think that... I, I trust your I trust your feelings. I know them to be true. Um, I I think it is important, like when you're a longer time player, to like be able to ignore the record, or like look at the specific situations and go like this deck was doing something on a power level that I think is competitive. There were a couple places where things didn't break my way, or I made decisions that, um, you know. Once you've been playing long enough, you can make bigger conclusions than just from the record of the, the leagues you play. Like, I remember when I started up with the Mono Green Karn Devotion in Pioneer, and I never did better than 4-1 in, in a league. I think I played five, five leagues, and I went 3-2 and most of them 4-1 one time, but I was like, this deck is cracked in half. The only decks I'm losing to are like, oops, all shocks, and and um oops all shocks with the, the deck's worst matchup and then uh spirits managed to beat me larynx punch worthy what do you think you'll reunite with the rest of the mana drum set I, my drum set's actually in this building in the storage unit so i have reunited with my drum set they are closer my drum set is closer to me than it usually has been for many many years Okay, so reanimator, huh? So we just we just brought in four endurances. Um, Force of negation seems like a good card to have here, although you're about to do the thing you mentioned a bit ago again. Order McDonald's. <laughs> Classical Gas is a good song, J.K. Torborg. So I'm wondering if I am supposed to board out Force of Negation, because they're probably going to... Oh, Fury seems bad. Yo, you right. You right. That's perfect. Thank you. Good God. I was, like, not even thinking of, like, boarding out that. Oh, oh. Wasn't that like 10 minutes ago, Kaya, that you mentioned that? Like, did you do it? Like, have you played a full league in about 10 minutes? Because I would believe it. Ice Nine Pile. <laughs> All right. Let's see if we can find more lands. There we go. Um, is it worth going down more cards? Like, am I supposed to even use this gemstone cavern? Or am I just supposed to bottom it? And then they're going to turn one discard me. And then I suspend crashing footfalls. And then I turn three shardless. Or I bottom the borrower, just give up any interaction. That seems insane, though. I can't. 
I think I'm supposed to slow roll this hand because I don't think if they if they manage a turn two or three, um, I don't know if they can turn two an archon. But if they manage a turn three archon, yeah, we'll we'll be happier that we did what we did. We all need gun Wait, this isn't... I was going to say, this isn't sticks. Who is this? The proto-men. Interesting. They're good. The really good cover, cover of Mr. Roboto. I, I did, JK. No, we got raided by uh, Giglio. Good man. Good human. Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. Domo arigato, Mr. Roboto. Thank you very much, Mr. Roboto, for doing the job. Nobody wants to. Oh, they're, they've got some green. They have a Mega Man rock opera. Yo, in? Can we get tickets, Freak? I'll take you to dinner first. All right. So they... They probably don't have an instant speed way to, um, no, Stomp is, Stomp is definitely in here because it's a shardless deck, but, um, Stomp is, like, Bone Crusher's in here because there's a bunch of red, uh, there's Furies that you want to pitch to, so you need a higher red count, and then there's also just a lot of cheap creatures that you want to kill, like, a lot. I'm just... I'm just wondering if I should just jam Bone Crusher this turn or leave up Interaction. Because, like, if I jam Bone Crusher this turn, they'll want to use resources on it. Then the end of their next turn is where I go Petty Theft into Shardless Crashing, and the Crashing comes off Suspend. Um, you'd Bone Crush? I'm just worried about them going, like, Land, Burial, um, immediately... Uh, uh, persist. Yeah, because, I mean, just because it's a reanimator deck and they're about to hit four mana. I don't know. And, like, playing Endurance is, is fine here, too, on their end step. Like, if I have to just end step Endurance, it's like, whatever. Please, please play Unburial into Persist. Please let my called shot be called Rats. Uh, yeah, that sucks, huh? Because I can't, can't bounce their chalice here. I think swords to plashers would be too good for modern. No, but I think it would alter modern. You would do nothing, let them take borrower. Fair enough. Okay, but end, end stepping endurance is the same as responding with endurance, right? I think we, we should understand that. Except it just like eliminates a choice for them, I guess. It stops them from making a mistake. Which I guess is not necessarily something I want to do. Sure. Yeah, it baits a mistake. I just thought it was like, it's pretty much 0% chance that they take the endurance. Hey, how's it going? Unfair gameplay. So, top deck borrower. So, I did not board in. No, that's a bad draw. I did not board in the Force of Uyghurs. Yeah, and we're up a game two. Um, I don't no, if I boarded correctly here. Which is... The the greatest skill of these decks is definitely the sideboarding. 
Yeah, that sounds quality, JK Torborg. It's a really good apricot beer from uh, Wells. No, it's Reanimator um, Giglio. This is the the turn I was worried about before, but they didn't play into it. They oh no, they don't have the persist. Okay, that's good. So I guess we'll just keep beating them down. Maybe I'll draw the brazen borer I need during my upkeep. No. I didn't manage it. I didn't manage to draw a brazen borrower during my upkeep. Rats. You know, it was a joke, <laughs> but, um... So if they... No, because if they had a um, persist, they would have played it here. And then I'm willing to trade Bone Crusher for Grief, no problem. Maybe they'll miss their trigger. Don't make me tap the sign, Larynx. Oh, no. Uh, I guess we have to petty theft this in response. Sucks. So we'll tempo them back. Beat them up a little bit. They're really making this, this game inconvenient. Because, like, petty thefting their chalice, unless it's their end step, doesn't do anything. They can hard cast their grief again. That's fine. They'll take our sharpless agents. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That, that, that is a very good draw. Are you trying to tell me Vendillion Click is a good card? No! What? God, what a nerd. Yeah, yeah. Goodness gracious. Double ephemerate on their griefs. I mean, our board is not bad. I'm just concerned about, like, the amount of removal they will eventually be playing here. Yeah, I think the Beats plan is going to do fine. Um, as long as it's not by Dre, the quality should be high enough. I feel like Orzhov Stoneblade has fallen off the map. It's just a low power level deck. Okay, I'm probably supposed to actually kill. Or... Am I supposed to split here? I think I'm supposed to split... JK. Yeah. We'll let him choose. Clock him? I just... Okay, yeah, they don't... But if they have a card they want to reanimate in their hand... Yeah, we care if, if Liliana makes... Well, we care if Liliana makes both players this card. Because we then we don't have the force and they could get the Archon back. Archon gains life. Archon's a big deal. Archon can absolutely stomp us out of this game very quickly so i think it's worth attacking the liliana it sucks that i have to take off the beat down plan but if they don't actually have anything particularly good this turn we just get to put in three one flyer and just put them in a bad spot there's a lot of stuff we could have drawn that would have been much better than uh, force fury would have been un incredible except for the fact that i only have four lands in play 
But, you know, other than that point. Grist? Oh, that's a prismatic ending for sure. Yeah. Wait, I just want the 3-1 flyer, right? This is fine. Yeah, this doesn't really change anything much. Although if they have another flicker or undying evil or something like that, I think I'd rather just spew. Cast Brazen Borer? I mean, so here's the thing, like... Yeah, I want to force it, too. Like, so, the the biggest reason that I'm okay with this is they still don't have a card to reanimate in their graveyard. And because they don't have that yet, like, the actual number of cards they would need to come together at this point to do something dangerous to me is very high. And so I just want to keep my, like... This, this turn I get to either crack them to four or put them to seven, and then they're dead on board. Basically, they're in a really bad spot as long as I keep my board going as is um okay this is fine so they can take a peep at my hand if they want to we'll play this before we end the turn just because they could have another liliana land not the best draw i mean it's statistically likely to happen pretty soon we're gonna bluff for combat because they might bring back their grief again and then they'll get to see this and then i'll play it they didn't have it okay we'll just play this out just because they have like liliana's and nonsense um Archon is another card that just makes you discard, period. So there's not really... A, and, and we could top deck a Fury next turn. So if they had us discard the land and then we top deck a Fury, it's like, oh, whoops. So next turn, this gets back the Grief. Um, but they're almost dead, so I don't really care. They seem pretty dead, I agree. Oh, it gets back to grief, but they would... They, no, actually, they can't do that. Huh. Interesting. So they're just going to one this turn, most likely. <laughs> Violent outburst? Not necessary. We'll make them take a much slower, more painful death here. Or faster, more painful death. Your dealer's choice. Alright, opponent, you're at one. It doesn't stop grief. Well, grief just doesn't matter. Five oh ten oh, huh? I don't know, Giggy, your deck might be kind of cracked. I don't know. So we didn't even Fury, like, at all that league. That's, that's the sad part to me. Like, some of the very powerful additions to this deck we didn't even get to utilize. Um, so... If there's things that I could say about this deck that were great, um, Bone Crusher was phenomenal um, for Force Negation, for Brazen Borrowers, absolutely fantastic. I mean, this is a support package for the the Shardless Agents, and the the, the core of this deck is these twelve cards, right? Um, having twenty four lands feels absolutely correct to me, um, and then this supporting cast is is like a plus plus. Fire and Ice is great because it's a split pitch for Force of Negation and Fury. Fury is theoretically insane. We didn't really use it at all. We mostly ended up using Dead Gone and Bone Crusher. Um, the Prismari commands are probably a much better flex slot than what we saw in that league. A sample size of five matches is not good enough to tell me how good or bad this other this card is. Um, we did have a couple of games where we like, flooded on lands where Prismari Command would have been amazing off the top. Um, we didn't hit it in those games, but it would have been great. Um, the sideboard is fairly straightforward the complicated thing about playing a deck like this is this is like the dredge two-step kind of deck where it's like okay i need to tailor my hate most of the time for their hate um which is easier when you have mystical disputes against the fairies less easy when like 
you have to figure out if you have to force a vigor chalices or or some other nonsense um although the number of hate pieces that target this deck versus living end are much lower living end gets hit by both cascade hate and graveyard hate whereas this deck does not um yeah i mean it's it's just very straightforward and very powerful it's uh it's it's good i I don't know if i'll be ever picking it up again after that league like i just felt like super straightforward how's the deck feel against murktide probably pretty fine um those are probably more interesting games than a lot of what we played there right a lot of that felt like shooting fish in a barrel i mean we we did 10-0 that league um murktide has things like unholy heat but you can get out a total of eight rhinos fairly reasonable if you want to make a deck less boring, you can add four red and six. It would make this deck much more exciting, Larence. Larynx. Yeah, really, really add some spice to those cascades. Yeah, that would be the way to do it. Gum up your shardless agents. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that because I don't think I've seen anyone do it since then. But in the first week of MH2 uh, Modern, there were a ton of people playing cascade variants in the queues. And a bunch of them were playing like hierarchs and stuff in their decks and so they would occasionally just like cascade into one of their hierarchs instead of one of their rhinos and it was it was really funny to me to like see aspiring spike be like popping off with your like the kind of quote original brew of team of rhinos and it was like oh you're supposed to make it so you always hit rhinos it's like yeah, yes 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 it's like it's like it's like these people never saw a living end deck. Anyway, um, this deck is phenomenal. Uh, check out uh, Gigi Giglio MTG um, for content on all sorts of wonderfully aggressive decks. He has been crushing on this particular list for a good long while. Uh, G I G L I O M T G. Uh, am I doing another? Ah. Uh... Hold on. So uh, if you are in the future and watching this on the YouTube, make sure you hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and check out any of the other videos you're interested in. And I will see you there.